me up a little bit. That's a little better. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, hello, good to see you guys. Say hi as you're joining in so I don't miss anyone who's here. Hello, Lori. Good morning, Debbie. Hello. Good morning, Ashley. Morning, Grandma. Keep joining in. I'm going to turn around and blow my nose real quick so you don't have to look at me. There we go. You remember today. Yes, you did. Good job. Good morning, Marie. Good to have you on here. Connie, good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. All right. We got about three minutes here, and then we'll get started. It's good to see you all. If you haven't already and you have a second here, just go ahead and run and get your communion stuff if you need to. Morning, Betty. Good morning, Merle. Morning, Dave and Gwen and... Looks like the Zigglers are hopped on here. Good morning. I was just saying, uh, go ahead and grab your communion stuff now and we can, uh, we'll have that time here towards the end. I'll use this piece of paper. Mike and Helen, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Hey Dawn, good to see ya. Good morning. Hope everyone's doing well today. It's uh, a rainy day here. I don't know where you are today, but it's it's definitely ra uh, raining here. And I was able to get over here without getting a little too wet, just a little misty. Um, but it's still a nice day. I mean, it was warm, not not too cold out. Um, I, I was able to come over just like this without any jackets on. So uh, hopefully it doesn't turn too nasty today. Morning, Larry and Agnes. Thanks for coming on. Well, we only got about a minute here, so I'll give it a, a minute and then I'm just going to jump in. Uh, you do have time now. If you want to run now and grab your communion stuff, go right ahead and we will use that at, near the end, uh, kind of like we've done the past couple weeks. I'm going to uh, go through the scripture. I'm going to do my little uh, sermon meditation. We'll do a little bit of prayer time see who needs some prayers out there, and then we'll have communion. And that'll that'll tie us up pretty well. Barb and Sue and um, Julie, thanks for joining. Good morning, good morning. <clears throat> All right. Uh, today, we're going to be going through John 14. 
chapter or chapter 14 verses 15 to 21 um ashley if you're paying attention for me could you type that into the chat um and then let new people know good morning good morning uh that way i don't have to keep saying it but i will say it one more time john 14 verses 15 to 21 if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live also. You also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The word of God to the people of God. Today we are nearing the end of Jesus' farewell discourse here in the book of John, as he is saying goodbye to the disciples and preparing them for his departure. And as he's doing this, he is leaving them with uh, one final push, uh, one final um, final word or final uh, thing to hold on to as they go forward. This one final word of hope is meant to carry them forward and to carry all of the future disciples forward. You know, this uh, passage here is one that can be carried out uh, amongst all generations down to us today. Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Now, I think that line alone speaks volumes. The love that Jesus is exemplifying throughout his life, the love that shaped his ministry, his, his life, his purpose, that love is the same kind of love that we are being called to live out and to express in our own personal discipleship. Now, the love that Jesus is speaking about, well, that is in very stark contrast to the world of the empire that John's community was living in. This world of love went against the grain of what they knew. In this time, of course, uh, that John was dealing with, Rome was still in power. They were still oppressing people. They were still uh, ruling with that iron thumb. They were still causing a lot of pain. And Jesus, what Jesus lived up to and what Jesus personified was a complete opposite of this terrible empire-type situation that Rome had. And for them, this love that Jesus spoke of was hope. It gave them hope for tomorrow, and it was uh, meant in that way because Jesus knew they would need that kind of burning fuel of hope to get them through uh, as Jesus is going away. So this love that Jesus is speaking of, well, what is it? You know, what What kind of love is it? You know, because love today is really a wonky term used in a lot of situations. And, you know, for, for a lot of us, we have a love of certain things and we love certain foods. So uh, love that Jesus is talking about. Well, uh, first of all, I can tell you what it's not. It's not some kind of abstract concept of love. It's not uh, a type of love that we sit around and we think about and we I wonder if we could ever reach it someday. Um, it's not some kind of ancient form of love that is lost and that we can maybe never even return to. Uh, no, it is what we like to call agape love. Agape love means that it is all-encompassing, all-surrounding, all-overcoming. This is a type of love that is lived, that is felt, that is given to one another. Jesus lived this love in his life, in his ministry, and he is telling his disciples here, so should you. So what did Jesus do then? Well, 
We have a long list of miracles or signs, according to John, and good deeds Jesus performed. There's a lot of things Jesus did in his life that um, show us and tell us uh, what this agape love looks like. But on a deeper level, Jesus uh, did something that will, I think, forever be a cornerstone of what it means to call yourself a disciple. Jesus reached out to those who were considered nobodies. Jesus brought forward the oppressed, the poor, the weak, the ugly and dirty, the marginalized, the sinner, the thief, all of those people who are looked at as less than. And he took those who wished to go through life unnoticed. He, these are people who in, in this time would have wanted to skate by without really having many eyes on them because they didn't want to get into trouble with the empire. They didn't want to get into any sort of altercation. So they tried to just stay out of the way. And yet Jesus took them. And he took them and he said, you are loved and that you are not only loved, but you are the first to go to heaven. You have a first class ticket to eternity with God. Jesus used the time he had here on earth to show us the future generations, you and I, what it means to be a community of God. Jesus demonstrated for us what it means to live a life devoted to God. And we remember now on that Passover night, you know, we've been talking about Jesus's final times. And on that Passover night, that night that he was betrayed, something else amazing happened on that night that wasn't the Last Supper. It's what's happened before the Last Supper. Jesus took a basin and a towel and he washed the feet of those who called him Master, Teacher, and Messiah. Jesus showed us that any human-made hierarchy was just a load of junk. He showed us that in God's eyes, we are all created equal, and together we are all children of God, and that God is not calling us to some sort of hierarchy where you know you have people who look a certain way or think a certain way or better than others. Rather, the love that God calls us to live is a love of neighbor. And to be neighbors in God's eyes is to recognize the other, that person who is outside of yourself, and to see them not as a stranger, not as an enemy or a sinner or anything else, but as someone who is also loved by God, and to extend God's love to them. So in our relationship to one another, we live out this love that Jesus is calling us to, by exemplifying these principles that are laid out. Now, of course, today we are in a time of increased anxieties, increased anger and frustration, and there's many of us who are losing our patience with the current situation that we are in. There's some of us who are maybe losing it altogether. This pandemic, no matter where you've found yourself in it, has not been easy for any of us, and yet our Christian duties or our Christian call, that pull we have from God, it doesn't change just because there's a pandemic. We don't get off the hook or get a little bit of a, a lighter call because of it. Rather, in this time, I think we're getting called even more by God to do even more and to be even closer to the things God is calling us to. Now, I've been reading and listening and participating in conversations with friends and colleagues around this subject of uh, what it would look like to reopen uh, the building. You know, the church has been open this whole time, but the building uh, to, to do that. And through these conversations, one thing that has stood out to me more than anything else, uh, especially in light of what it looks like for us to be staying home and distancing and all of that, is that we need to look at this time and look at this period of distancing and staying home, not as some political issue that is uh, debated and that Really, we have to work out uh, on, on that bigger scale. But as a neighbor issue, this has nothing to do with politics. It has everything to do with neighbor. If we are loving Jesus by keeping his commandments, and Jesus' number one commandment was to love God with all that we have and to love our neighbor as ourselves, how can we continue to do that in this pandemic? Well. Today, right now, it looks like we do that by staying home. We do it by making sure that we are keeping those around us safe. 
We do this by making sure that nothing we do contributes to the spread of this virus to those we love. And yes, of course, the virus spreads. Yes, of course, the flu spreads. And yes, there is the truth that people will still pass away even if we all stay home forever. But that's not the point. That's not the point. The point is, is that the example Jesus left for us was agape love. It was a submissive love. He got down on his hands and knees and washed the feet of his fellow neighbor. Jesus didn't wash the feet of his disciples. He didn't wash the feet of those who followed him. He washed the feet of fellow children of God, equals in God's eyes. You and I, we wash the feet of our neighbors today by not washing their feet. Today, we wash their feet by living out this social distancing that we are in, by wearing a mask, by doing all the things we can do so that when we are finally able to gather again under one roof, when everything is finally passed together, we do it together as one body without having to leave someone behind, or worse, leave someone six feet in the ground. Agape love, it's not easy. In fact, it is the most pure form of love that we can uh, think of in our minds. And for many of us, we're going to struggle with it. I struggle with it. Jesus set the bar pretty high. But you know what? It gives us something to strive for. We have a reason to go on each day. We have a reason to continue to be the hands and feet of God because we know that there's still so much work to do. We know that there are so many lives out there that are still have not experienced this type of all-encompassing, all-reaching, all-powerful love. We know that there's people in desperate need of God's love and in this love that we have within us. And today, as we are looking at Jesus' final words to his disciples, he chose to leave us with this. Love. For with God, it begins and ends with love. So I pray together today that as a community of faith, as people gathered here, we can go forward in this agape love, holding on to each other through this journey and doing all that we can for our neighbor, our friends, and our fellow children of God so that when this passes, we can all be together again. Amen. All right. I want to thank you guys for joining with us and for uh, sticking with us throughout. Uh, this is a time uh, that we will dedicate to uh, sending prayers to anyone who is in need of prayers. Uh, so I, I ask you now in this time, if there's anyone out there today who has prayers on your hearts and would like to share that with us, uh, let us know. Let me know now and I will lift that up in prayer together. I'll give it a couple minutes here and then we will uh, go ahead and join in that prayer. Uh, if you do send your prayer in, you do have a minute then to run over and uh, grab a hold of some communion materials if you haven't done that already, uh, and we will join in the time of communion together. But any prayers you'd like to share today, please send them in now. I'll start us off if that makes it easier on you. I don't know if she'll type anything in here, but I do want to keep praying for Sue, who started her chemo treatments, and just pray that that is going well and that she is um, still able to uh, get out and do stuff. I did see on Facebook that she was out planning stuff, so it looks like she not you're not completely weak in Sue, but I, I'm just going to keep praying for you. And we'll keep praying for you as a church here during these treatments and, and just lift you up and pray that things continue to go well. Um, there was a prayer request that I was given for Rich Wilhite. We remember Rich, who is unfortunately experiencing some very severe jaw pain due to a, yeah, 
Yep, I was just thinking of that, Connie. Uh, some really bad jaw pain. Uh, there's a, a, a gap and some things going on that they're, they're dealing with, uh, Rich is dealing with, and it's really causing quite a bit of ache and pain. Uh, and we all know, you know, toothaches really do send shooting pain throughout a lot of you. So uh, we want to lift Rich up today and pray that uh, some sort of uh, resolution comes to that. I, when I, last I talked to him, he said he didn't know what it would be, but we hope something comes of it because that is really... A terrible pain to deal with. Given another minute here, any other prayers that you would like to lift up today? Continue to pray for Sue. Thank you. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely continue to pray for Sue and all that she's going through right now. Definitely. We'll continue to pray for all the COVID patients and people affected by that and those who have lost their lives. And we'll continue to pray for all our frontliners who are out there every day. Okay. Would everyone join with me in a moment of prayer? Lord, we come to you now today, this Sunday, May the 17th, lifting up our hearts, lifting up our ears, lifting up all that we have to you, praying that wherever we are today, wherever we are sitting or lying or, or standing or wherever we may be, Lord, that you are with us, that together through your spirit, we can be bound together as one body, as one body of worship together and that through these prayers, Lord, you may hear our call. God, today we are lifting up to you prayers of thanksgiving for this opportunity that we have to join together as a community of faith, Lord. We know that uh, though we may not be together under one roof, that we are still together uh, through this technology, through uh, our own will, and through your love. And God, may that bond that we have together as a community of faith strengthen us and bind us together in a way that gives us the hope for tomorrow. Lord, as we gather, we gather to pray for all of those in, the, in our lives who are important to us and those around us who are in much need of your love and your uh, healing hands. So God, today we lift up Sue Clark, who has started her chemo treatments, and we pray that that is going well and uh, that she is able to uh, come through this uh, latest battle of cancer quickly and, and fully and that her spirits may be kept high throughout this we know lord uh, that she has a strong support group around her and we pray for all of those uh, so that they may be lifted up and still continue to give her love and support god we lift up today rich wilhite who is dealing with extreme jaw pain and we pray that uh, in some way he can find relief from that and that they can uh, find a solution to that jaw pain that helps ease that burden that he is carrying lord we just pray for uh, that to subside and that the pain be less and that uh, he eventually comes through that with no pain. God, lift up those uh, who are affected by this COVID-19 pandemic for those who have lost their lives and their families and loved ones who uh, were not able to be by their sides. We pray for them and we pray for those who are currently ill from this pandemic, uh, this virus, and we pray that they may be uh, recovering soon and be well and that this virus may pass on from our midst today. And God, we pray today again for those frontline workers, those people who are putting their lives out there every day, risking infection, risking uh, spread, and risking all of those things so that those of us who are not frontline workers still have the things we need uh, to get by each day. God, we pray for them and their safety uh, and their sanity and all of those things they need in this time. And Lord, be with each of us today who have gathered here and those who have not gathered here. For those who are uh, tuning in late and are uh, have prayers that uh, I was unable to answer live, we pray for you. Whatever prayers we are all carrying on our hearts today that have gone unspoken, God, we pray that you can work within us to help uh, figure out those prayers and to see where we are to go with that and help us to be all that we can be in the lives that you have called us to. 
Lord, we bring these prayers together today. We lift them up for your keeping, and we pray them all together in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Alyssa, for that for that last prayer there. The, those who are out of work and would are ready to get back there and, and get into their own routine. Yes, thank you. I, I can tell you this Sunday mornings don't quite a, is feel as uh, is normal as they did before. But having this interaction here has been really awesome for me. So I thank everyone for your participation and for joining with us on this time. We are going to turn now to this time of communion. I hope that you have had a chance to grab your materials. If you haven't, uh, you can look back on the video and participate in it then, uh, or you can do it on your own fruition. But to, right now, I want us to uh, join in this time together. This is a time uh, that has always been so special to me, and I, I still am so glad that we are doing it together each week because, uh, for me, this really is food for my soul. It helps uh, reinvigorate me. It helps get me... Uh, pump back up for the week and it really helps me to just feel centered and 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 guided on my path towards God and towards all that I'm supposed to do. So I invite you to please join with me on this path. Anyone who is joining now or later, you're invited to this time uh, so long as you're holding Jesus in your hearts. This is a time for us to share and as we do it, we recall the night that Jesus was betrayed as he took a loaf of bread and he blessed it and he broke it saying this represents my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me and in the same manner he took a cup he blessed it and he said drink for this is the new covenant in my blood and for as often as you eat this bread and you drink from this cup you proclaim the lord's death until his return let us now join in the prayer taught to us by our Lord and Savior and join in the elements together following. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join together now in the elements before us. Amen. This has been another wonderful time of worship with all of you today. I want to thank you for joining with me, for uh, spending some time here on this Sunday morning to, to worship. And I just pray that God is with you today, that God is strengthening you and giving you what you need to get through this day and, and, and this coming week. I look forward to uh, bringing more news this week about uh, what's coming next here at the church. We are planning to have a board meeting, and in that meeting we will be discussing things such as uh, what it will look like uh, in the future here as we start to reopen ourselves and what it looks like um, for us to continue going in the way that we are. So I just uh, am going to be praying on that and pray and have ask all of you to please pray for that as we go into this week uh, and uh, in this meeting and, and pray for our, our thoughts and our uh, everything we do to be guided by God's love uh, as we talked about today. Uh, I hope that you are finding some sort of solitude in this time, that you're finding some sort of, uh, you can call it a hobby, you can call it a distraction, whatever it is that you're doing in this time, I hope you're finding something that is helping you to bear with uh, this time and, and that you are finding ways to interact with the, your family and friends and loved ones. Um, if you are in need of anything out there, please let us know. We are your church. We are here for you. We're part of your family and we pray that you are able to uh, get by this without struggling as hard as you may be. So, if you find yourself in a difficult situation, let me know. Um, you and I can have a very private conversation about that, and I can see what we can do uh, to make your life a little easier. 
Uh, and that is what I'm here for. I want to help you in any way I can. If it's just a conversation, I'm glad to have it. But let me know what you are all in need of, and I'm here for you. And now I pray that God may keep you, bless you, preserve you. May God may lift you up and strengthen you. And that wherever you find yourself this week, whatever you may be doing, wherever you are, the agape love that God has called us to live may be lived out in your eyes and in the eyes of those around you. Amen. Have a blessed week, everyone.